السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر بردر سسٹرز ویورز اینڈ فرینڈز آف اکرا ٹی وی ویلکم ٹو انادر ایڈیشن آف ریئل ٹاک آئی ایم یو ہوسٹ اقبال وانا اینڈ ایز آئی سی ٹو ایوری ویک وی کم ان ٹو یور ہومز آن اے ویک ان ویک آؤٹ ٹرائن ٹو برنگ ٹو یو انفارمیشن آف انٹرسٹ سوری لاسٹ ویک ڈیو اے ٹیکنیکل پرابلم وی کوڈ ناٹ کم ٹو یو اینڈ دا پروگرام واز سپوز ٹو بی اباؤٹ دا ڈیوسٹیٹنگ ارتھ کویکس دیٹ افیکٹڈ آر بردر اینڈ سسٹرز اینڈ آل دی ادر پیپل ان ٹرکی I've just now been told and informed through messages I'm getting that another very powerful earthquake has struck the region of Turkey as well. May Allah give them strength and may Allah protect the people of Turkey. Amen. Last week I had a, a Turkish brother who lives in our community was going to come and provide an update on the latest situation. Inshallah, once uh, we have some more clarity about what is happening at the moment in Turkey, we will try and get that back to you. As you know, Al-Khair, like many other charities, is doing an enormous amount of work in those areas, sending in resources wherever they can to try and help those brothers and sisters who have found themselves in this very dreadful situation. As we know, up-to-date information so far is that over 40,000 people have lost their lives. Many, many people, hundreds of thousands of people have lost their homes. They have no food, they have no shelter, they have no medication. And it's the work of the charity organizations which is trying to sustain them at this moment in time. Their need is the greatest need of all at this moment in time. So I would urge you, as I would have done last week, that you try and contribute and give as much as you can and that Allah gives them protection from these devastating earthquakes which is affecting them. There are people out there who have lost everything. Just imagine going to sleep at night, having planned the, the next day, what you're going to do, who you're going to meet, where you're going to eat. And all of that just vanishes within 45 seconds. 45 seconds, that's what they say it took for this enormous amount of damage and destruction that hit the people of Turkey on that particular morning. So we need to contemplate ourselves as well. We all live in shel a sheltered lives, very comfortable in the knowledge that maybe, you know, we will not be affected. But you never know at which moment Allah in his infinite wisdom will decide to test us. To me, this is a test for us anyway, as it is, because this is the time when we need to stand up and be counted. Uh, regardless of the fact that whether they're Muslims or not, obviously being Muslim brothers and sisters and our families, we need to do as much as we can, everything within our power, to try and help those people uh, in Turkey itself. But on the level, level of humanity, regardless of their faith, their color, their creed, We need to do all we can to try and help those who are less fortunate than ourselves under normal circumstances. But we need to up our game in this particular instance because of where and who is hit, who has been hit by this devastation. We have seen such devastation before when it happened in Indonesia, in Pakistan. And the, the Muslim community in particular has shown great fortitude in getting to the forefront of giving as much as they could. And I'm sure... All of my viewers will have done the same at this particular instance, instance as well. As I said, news is just coming in now. We don't know the extent of the damage that this earthquake within a few minutes ago that has happened in Turkey. But I'm sure whatever it is, it will have a very damaging, if not devastating effect on the lives of those who are already suffering. So I hope you, you, know, you will do whatever you can. And today, you know, I wanted to bring something a light more enlightening information to you because we've all been struggling over the last two weeks with this devata devastating images that we've been seeing of all those buildings collapsed, kids running around looking for their parents, not knowing who they are, where they are. And those harrowing images has affected every one of us in, a, you know, in some way form or shape or form. And I thought after two weeks, maybe we, you know, we may be able to sort of, while still being mindful of what is happening and all we need to do, that we may be willing and able to try and look for something slightly more positive. And hence, I've asked a very dear friend of mine to come to, to this program today and join me uh, and share some of the work that he's been doing. I've known him for a number of years. He's local from, from Dewsbury, and he's done some amazing work, particularly around charities, but also around sort of uplifting the community across many, many fields, in particular, in the field of education, uh, as well as entrepreneurship. And therefore, I'm really deeply grateful to my dear friend, 
Yasser Master, for coming here and joining me today and sharing with us some of the work that he's done and also some of the thoughts that he has around what are some of the key challenges that affects our community in this country and what do we need to do? How do we go about addressing some of those challenges and what are the, what are, what are the implications if we don't address them? And that, those are some of the issues that I want to talk to, to Yasser. Yasser, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Real Talk. Thank you for coming and giving and sharing your time with us. Um, obviously, as I said, we've heard this devastating news. But before I, we go and talk about that, can I just say Yasser, obviously, as I say, is not just an entrepreneur, but he's done charity work. And his main sort of 70% of his time is sort of spent doing a lot of charitable work, including helping to run Muslim schools for boys and girls. He's a CEO and, and chief, so main trustee of the Paradise and Ridas Muslim Boys and Girls School in Dewsbury. Those who around, live around the area may have heard of it, will have heard of it. But also, he's, you know, Education Excellence is a company that he runs, which is, tries to uplift the education attainment of our young people. Little Wonders and Brilliant Minds are two other organizations. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. So, Yasser, welcome. Thank you for coming here, as I say. I mean, obviously, you've heard the news about Turkey, and I'm sure you've been at the forefront of doing some enormous amount of charitable work. When you hear this, what goes through your mind? You know, the devastation that people over there have suffered. Clearly, it's really sad whenever mm -hmm. we hear this news. But generally, more often than not, we feel sorry for a little part, then we continue with our lives. Mm -hmm. These are lessons from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This yes. is like a wake-up call. And straight away, I want to react. I want to benefit, not only through my money, my time, but whatever I have. And the way I look at it is, Allah is testing us, not them. That how does the Muslim Ummah, how do we react to this situation? Mm. Mm. We want to be at the forefront. We want to be there sharing our pain and showing our support. And it's not about us helping them. In reality, and this is the foundation of whatever I do, the, the saying, you, you help Allah's deen, Allah will help you. Pleasure, pleasure. So in reality, when we're helping other people, we are mm. not helping them, we are helping ourselves. Mm. And this is the inspiration for whatever I do in life. And I so always I have that at the forefront. Mm. You help Allah's deen and Allah will help you. Whoever, the likes of Al Khair, many, many other charitable organizations, mm. be it collectively or individually. Mm. When we are helping, then truly we are just helping ourselves. Mm. Now, I know in the past, I know from the, the work that you've done with Paradise and other, other work that you've done, particularly during COVID. You know, you started off with you know, a million meals program project, mm -hmm. uh, not just in this country, but across Correct. the world as well. You know, and I, I remember coming to the Masjid Madhya Zakaria in Sabaltam, where you had this, you know, in, the, the project running from. And, you know, obviously that was something, this is going back to three years now, uh, something that you've been, as I say, in, 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 invested in quite a lot. Now, when on an international level, I know you've been in mm -hmm. Pakistan, you've been in Indonesia, wherever there's been disasters. How did your community respond to this particular disaster uh, in, in Sao Town in Dewsbury, the first earthquake? Okay, so about million meals, because we mm -hmm. mentioned million meals, um, when the whole COVID situation started, we started initially serving the local community. Yeah helping the local people, alhamdulillah, through the organizations which we had, we had the go-ahead to work even within the lockdown element within the local. So we had a number of elders saying, uh, a number of people, yes, everyone's been affected, uh, mm. not only locally, internationally. Why are we just helping and supporting people mm. locally? So my dear friend, Hafiz Jabir, uh, um, he gave me a call on the first day of Ramadan and we were discussing and we were talking about the impact and the devastation which has taken place because mm. of the, the, the whole COVID situation. So whilst discussing, we thought that, Alhamdulillah, you know, we are fasting. This is the first day of Ramadan. But many uh, people, and we know that the evening meal is there. Many uh, people within this situation will not know where the next meal is coming from. Mm. So we came with an idea that, okay, let's set a target and let's feed a million people this so Ramadan. Either, yeah. So initially from one conversation, Within 30 days, Alhamdulillah, not only did we reach the target of feeding 1 million people, we fed approximately 1.4 million people right. globally in the month of Ramadan. Masha and Allah, Alhamdulillah, Allah. this is amongst and alongside 
the number of other feats and works which we did within our local community, right. serving the hospitals, serving front, front, front line workers, mm. and serving many uh, other people. And not only that, we were serving our local people within our community, mm. people who had everything, but still wanting them to know that we are still here. Mm. Charity isn't just for the people who are poor. It's charity which is smiling, charity which is taking obstacle off the road. Charity mm. is just looking after and seeing everyone is happy mm. and just putting a smile on someone's face. Which is what it's so Alhamdulillah, anyway. you know, this is where the Million Meals initially started. So right. from the success of Million Meals and in the space of 30 days, as a community, you know, as an organized charity, we raised approximately 350,000 pounds. Mash, mash, Mashallah, with, uh, uh, within uh, um, uh, a few announcements, Mashallah, our mm. community is such a mm. generous community which came together. Mm. We had 200 volunteers, predominantly females, wanting to bake, wanting to cook, wanting to serve. And Mashallah, it was an amazing experience in mm. the worst of situations and worst of times, which as a country, as people, which we've not seen. Mm. So Alhamdulillah, this inspired us to do more international works. Mm. And generally, uh, my, from my experience, my lifestyle, Charity is about giving and we give to a charity and we move away. Yeah. But I've always wanted to go there myself mm. and speak to the people who've been affected. Be mm. a part of that. Mm. And the difference which that makes to giving so is a first, world of difference. You get first hand experience first, or also the first hand knowledge of what is actually affecting those individuals. Co correct. Yeah, so yeah. when the floods in Pakistan happened, we uh, put an appeal out as a community, as a masjid, mm that we should, do our, our, we should do something for our community and our mm. people in Pakistan. So mm. within a few weeks, Alhamdulillah, we raised 240,000 so pounds. So and we went, a delegation of eight people, uh, predominantly from our masjid, went mm. first hand and went to these places, seven, eight places in Pakistan, where mm. the floods three months on are still there and it's affecting lives. Mm. So Alhamdulillah, we spoke to the local people. We identified project ourselves. Mm -hmm. and Alhamdulillah, works are near completion now of the approximately 70, 80 homes which, have, which we have built from the mm -hmm. money of our own, Alhamdulillah, majority local community. So, Hanan, I mean, uh, that, this, as I say, as you, you hear what, so what the Asa has got to say, uh, obviously has been involved in a lot of charity work. And he's quite right. I mean, up near our community has always been at the forefront of giving. And even the the most eminent uh, financial newspaper in this country, the Times, uh, sort of published an article, front page article a few years ago to say that the Muslim community of the UK is one of the most generous communities who you know, giving out enormous amount of donations to some of these tragedies that affect the world. And I'm sure that is going to be continuing. If anybody wants to, to you know, ring in, share their thoughts you know, uh, with, with me and my, my guests and with our viewers, you know the number is 01274 214299. It was on your screen. We'll come back again. Please ring in, share your thoughts, your comments. If you want to talk about what's happening at the moment, then I'm sure we can talk about that. But Yasser, yeah, if you turn to the other side of your work. Can I just finish the on. charity? Yep. Alhamdulillah, we uh, put an appeal out to Turkey. We have nearly reached 100,000 pounds so far. So and inshallah, hoping that another delegation from our masjid would go to the affected areas personally with the funds uh, and mm. inshallah the appeal still continues. SubhanAllah. And th that's the Masjid, masjid Zakaria in Dewsbury. I'm sure many people uh, in England will know about it anyway because it's quite a well-known Masjid. Mona Yaqub Saab, on whom I did a program uh, a few months ago, was one of the key members of that Masjid as well. And he was the inspirational leader in that Masjid where people like Yaqub and others grew up uh, when I saw was my Ustad as well, when I was young, which was many, many moons ago. He's still a baby, you know, <laughs> not even born in those days. But uh, let me turn to your other side, the other work that you do. I mean, you know, obviously you are the CEO and, and one of the sort of prime movers and shakers in the Muslim such as primary schools uh, in the area as well. So you've got Paradise, which is a girls' school. And you've got Paradise Rida, is the primary school. So, so pri primary school, yeah. And, and then you've got the Rida School as well. Can just tell us a little bit about those two institutions. Okay. Um, firstly, I think, uh, Jazakallah for giving us the opportunity. Oh, for many years, you've been asking us to come on the show, but it's not my style. Well, your head, your head teacher yes, has correct. been on my program. Correct. Sister Hafsa yeah. and Janine have been on the program yeah. a couple of years ago, and they're yeah. 
shared some of the you know the the, the good things that they're doing. But I mean that was quite a few years ago. So not really our style to talk about the achievements and the success of our works. Mm -hmm. But alhamdulillah from our last conversation, I thought to myself, and the works which I do predominantly with Islamic leaders and leaders of institutions in the country, that I thought to myself that if my coming here would inspire even one individual, then it's worth coming. Definitely. So and alhamdulillah, that's, that's, that's the, the reason. That's what the program yeah. is all yeah. about. We want to inspire yeah. young Muslim people yeah. into doing things that they, they may have thought of but we're a bit afraid to do so. Maybe they'll listen to you, watch you, yeah. and they'll be inspired in doing something similar. I think that's the main reason why I've yeah. come over here. So a little bit of education. Mm -hmm. Approximately 22, 20, 22 years back, I graduated. I qualified as a qualified teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and I was teaching in a, a sec secondary state school. Within the first month of teaching there, I realized that if I have children, and at that time I wasn't even married, I would never send these children to the state school. Mm -hmm. It's because what of was the, the what was that? Why was that? What reasoning was that? It, it, it's it's the dumbing down of the education mm -hmm. and the environment which is there, which will not let uh, a child flourish. Right. And that was my biggest thought. Mm -hmm. When you graduate, when you come out, you come out uh, with a certain perception, a certain in intellectual level, mm -hmm. and when you're teaching students twenty, thirty within the classroom, and when you look at the whole environment within the schooling, and you think that. Is this what education is? If mm. this is what education is, then I don't want to send my children to an educational mm. system. Second element which I felt was that educational system is making modern day slaves. Right. I think some of the things which I may say might offend people, might no, come I'm across sure yeah, slightly sure. controversial, yeah. but these were my own thoughts. Yeah, that yeah, this yeah. is like modern day slavery. Mm -hmm. You're making, you're becoming a professional but you're bound by whatever, the bosses, and a, and a lifestyle and a culture. So mm. I'm an individual where if I see a problem, then I do not like talking about a problem. I want to be a solution. Mm -hmm. Many years back before I came into education, I used to say, if only people would do this, if only our elders would do that. And I soon mm. realized that if I want to see a change, then that change I have to be. Mm -hmm. So Alhamdulillah, uh, Within the first year uh, of teaching, we opened, I opened up a, a first homeschooling concept. Right. I realized that the only way I can combat this is create a parallel system and right. starting from education. So was this for your own children? or So this was, uh, this was, uh, was for my sister, right. my relatives, friends' children. Right. Uh, my children weren't born. I wasn't even married oh, at that time. You, yeah, you said yeah. you weren't married. So I started the homeschooling concept and alhamdulillah that, that became a success. Mm -hmm. So after that, ap approximately 14, 15 years back, Paradise Primary um, moved into its new building. Um, so I joined the school and the organization at that time. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was slightly relaxed in terms of operations. Then DFE and Ofsted and all of that started kicking in. The pressure started mm -hmm. kicking in. So I started running um, alongside a governing body, Paradise Primary. Alhamdulillah, uh, we, were, we had approximately 100 odd children initially of people who wanted the protection of their children, wanted preservation. They wanted an Islamic environment. Yeah, an Islamic well. environment. Yep. But I soon realized that these are only children, parents who want to protect their children. But what we wanted was we wanted to attract families who are not interested in Deen, but who wanted the best education. Mm. The goal was how Deen enters each and every home. So I thought that we let's dangle the carrot of academia. Let's mm -hmm. make this school the best school within our local authority. So Alhamdulillah, within a year or so, we became the best. Out of 156 local primary schools, we used to come number one or number two year in, year out. So within a very short space, we had mm -hmm. the high level professionals, we had the businessmen, we had the consultants knocking on our door and wanting their children to come to our organization for academia. Mm. So Alhamdulillah, they came for academia, we injected Dean through their children and mm. Alhamdulillah, it was a win-win situation. So we yeah. were a success year in, year out, coming in the top 100 schools in the country, but it was only a primary and primary alone. So mm. we thought to ourselves that after a primary, our children are going back into the state sector mm. and now they're becoming something and it's just a one-off, an exception becoming mm. something. But I wanted the exception to be the norm and not mm. an exception. 
So, Alhamdulillah, we were inspired to open up our first girls school, right. Rida Girls. It started with two girls. Right. Today, we have approximately 140 girls mm. and a waiting list of 140. So, Alhamdulillah, within so a space of five years. Rida has got 140 young Muslim women. Yes. And, uh, okay. and a waiting list of 140 oh, plus. Right, right. So, Alhamdulillah, because of the capacity of the building, uh, we, do, we cannot house. And if we, if, if we could house 500 girls with confidence, I can say mm. that all of that would be filled overnight. Mm. Right. So, Alhamdulillah, we started five years back with Rida Girls School. Right. People say that your experience is primary. Mm. What are you doing playing with lives of children? Uh, here, so Alhamdulillah, our first set of results came two years back. Right. And we came in the top five schools in the country in terms of, in terms of progress and top 80 schools in the country in terms of attainment. Right. Alhamdulillah, from the entire cohort, uh, I would say uh, all but one girl went into uh, Greenhead College, which is the number one college within our local area. Right. And the one girl which didn't go was because of out of choice and not because she did not mm. get a place. Mm. Alhamdulillah. So the attainment levels of these young, these young girls, young women, was so high that they automatically virtually yes. in the top hundred place. schools in the country. Right, right. Our average grade grade mm. was a grade seven in ten GCSEs for every single child. Right. So obviously that must have been a challenging task. There's no doubt about it. So that must have taken up a lot of your time. So in terms of my life, 70% of my life is dedicated for charitable works. Yeah. I, my time, my, I, I, the core of my time, mm. and today at present, previously it was more of my time which was de dedicated, probably 70, 80, 90% when I initially started the secondary schools. Mm. It was challenging, it was time consuming, mm. but we cannot attain anything without burning the midnight oil. Oh, definitely. Yes, Alhamdulillah, definitely. the sacrifice needs to be given yeah. and the fruits and the rewards come later on. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Once everything is set, mm. so one of the reasons why I came on this program is to inspire people and mm. not just youngsters, not educationalists, but the leaders of our community. Because mm. what I find 90% of the 30% time which I work within my consultants element, Mm. is I work with Islamic leaders. Can, can we pick that up? I mean, obviously, you know, we, we're going for a short break now. I mean, this whole issue about the leaders in our community, we can pick that up in the afternoon, in the second part of the program. I hope what we've heard so far is something that you've been inspired with. Uh, as I say, we're going for a break, uh, and I tell you this every week, go and have, make yourself a tea, coffee, or faluda, whatever it is that you know you enjoy. Inshallah, we'll come back very soon, and we'll pick up the discussion around you know, other issues that affect our communities and how leadership is quite crucial to the way we want to move forward. So thank you very much so far. I'll see you very soon after the break shortly. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.